Hello guys, I'm Antibia Weber. It's been a while here. Now in this video, we want to look at glycogenesis. Now when we talk about glycogenesis, you should know that glycogen and genesis. What is genesis? Synthesis. So glycogenesis is the synthesis of glycogen. So that's what we want to look at in this video. Synthesis of glycogen. How glycogen become manufactured. How glycogen can be synthesized. That's what we want to look at in this video. Now before I proceed, you need to understand what we call glycogen metabolism. You know, in glycogen metabolism, it is divided into a synthetic reaction and a degradative reaction. You know, metabolism is the sum of all chemical reaction in the human body, whether a synthetic or a degradative. So when we are talking about the synthetic form of glycogen, that's what we call glycogenesis. But degradative form of glycogen is what we call what? Glycogenolysis. But now in this video, we want to look at glycogenesis. What is glycogenesis? Yeah. So when we talk about glycogenesis, glycogenesis is the building up of glycogen from glucose. You get? So in the process of forming glycogen, the precursor is what we call the glucose. So the glucose is the starting substrate. The glucose is the precursor that will never give rise to our what? Glycogen. And you know, when we talk about glycogenesis, you should be able to know that it is an anabolic reaction. You know, when we talk about anabolism, it's a process whereby a, a simpler molecule is converted into a what? Larger molecule. That is what glycogenesis is. So the simpler molecule here is the glucose. Do you get it? So the glucose is the simpler molecule that is converted into a larger molecule, which is glycogen. And that's what we call anabolic pathway. You get to know in anabolic pathway, energy and heat is conserved. You get energy is conserved along with heat in anabolic reaction. And that's why glycogenesis is an endabolic reaction. Do you get it now? So we want to look at how glycogen is derived from glucose, which is our precursor or the starting substance. That is the amount of glycogenesis. Now, where do we have glycogenesis occurring in the body? You know, in the human organ, there are various pathways that occur in the human organ. Yeah. But specifically, when we are talking about glycogenesis, there's a particular region or organ of the human body where glycogenesis is occurring. Most especially, glycogenesis occurs in the liver. Okay, let me start with the organ where it occurs. So the organ. Now, in the body organ, where does glycogenesis occur? Glycogenesis occurs majorly in the liver. Yeah, it occurs in the liver. Not only in the liver, in the liver cells, the hepatocytes. So glycogenesis also occurs in the muscles. Yeah, it also occurs in the muscles. You know, in the liver, about um, in the liver we can store about hundred of glycogen in the liver. You get why in the most we can store about 400 to 500 grams of glycogen in the liver. In the what? Muscles. You know, in the liver, glycogen is stored in the liver. That's the way that glucose is stored in the form of glycogen in the liver. So, how many glucose can be stored in the form of glycogen in the liver? About 100 grams. Also, in the muscles, we can store about 400 to 500 grams of glucose in form of glycogen. But where exactly does glycogenesis occur? It occurs in the liver cell. And liver can store up to about 100 grams of glucose in form of glycogen. You know, the essence of converting glucose to glycogen is to store the glucose. You get that is the reason why it undergo glycogenesis. So glycogen is a storage form of glucose. Do you get it now? So in the liver, this is their storage capacity. So liver can store up to 100 grams of glycogen, while most can store up to 400 to 500 grams of glycogen. So anything beyond the storage capacity of this liver and muscle, the glucose has no choice that to be converted to fat. Because since they have reached up to this limit, so any glucose that enters into the liver will not be converted into what glycogen anymore. If it has passed 100 grams or 400 to 500 grams in the muscle, so the glucose will be converted to what? To fat. That is if they have passed beyond the holding capacity or the storage capacity of these what, organs. Do you get my point now? So that is it. Now let's continue. Now, when do we undergo glycogenesis? 
Do you get it now? Blackmetallicis occurs majorly in the first state. What I call it? In the first state. You know, in the first state, especially when you are consuming carbohydrate food. You know, when you eat carbohydrate food, what happens? Then it goes down across the what? The GI The gastrointestinal tract will absorb the glucose. Do you get it? They diffuse across the GIT and they absorb the glucose. So when they absorb the glucose, then some part of the glucose will also diffuse into the blood. Do you get it? So during the first stage, when they are consuming high carbohydrate food, the glucose will be diffused into the blood, into the blood. And when glucose diffuses into the blood, and a series of glucose is concentrated in the blood, that's the thing that we can use what we call what? Hyperglycemia. Do you get it now? So when there is high blood glucose level in the blood, that's not what it's hyperglycemia, hyper high blood glucose level. Do you get it now? So when you have hyperglycemia, which is high blood glucose level, a particular hormone needs to be stimulated. Are you getting what I'm saying now? In order to convert this excess glucose to become glycogen. So which organ secretes that particular hormone? The organ is called the pancreas. Do you get it now? So the pancreas will become stimulated when there's high glucose level. When there's high blood glucose level. So the part of the pancreas that will be stimulated is the what? Beta cells. I get what I'm saying now. The beta cells of the pancreatic isolate of Langaha will be stimulated to secrete what? A particular hormone known as insulin. When there's what? Hyperglycemia. You know, hyperglycemia is when there's high blood glucose level. Do you get what I'm saying now? So, hyperglycemia, you know, normally the blood glucose level should be about 70 mg per dm to 100 mg per dm or 125 mg per dm. Yeah, this is the normal blood glucose level. So, when the blood glucose level is around this area, that's the thing that the blood glucose level is normal. But anything above the 125 mg dm, when the blood glucose level is above 125, do you get most especially during fasting period? That's when you can see the person has a low what? Hyperglycemia. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So any blood glucose level below the 70 mg dm, that's there that the person has what? Hypoglycemia. But when about, if it is about two hours postprandia, when I say postprandia, at least two hours after me, and the blood glucose level is more 80 mg per year, we can, we can also say the person has what? Hyperglycemia. Do you get so anything above 125 during fasting period? It is hyperglycemia. And anything around 180 mg two hours after me, is also what hyperglycemia. Telling you that there is large amount of glucose in the blood. And when there is large amount of glucose in the blood, the beta cells of the pancreas need to be stimulated. The beta cells of the pancreatic aspect of the gland is secret what? Insulin. And this insulin will regulate and cause a metabolic pathway to occur, and that's what we call glycogenesis. Do you understand that? That's why I say the, the, uh, the period of which glycogenesis can occur is most especially when you have increased blood glucose level. I get what I'm saying now. So when you have less this in the blood, yeah, the extracellular food, the ECL, now in the blood, the appearance of what? Glucose. The effect of glucose in the blood. I get what I'm saying. So because there is high concentration of glucose in the blood, that's what we call high glycemic. So this is need to be stimulated in order to what? stimulate the what process called what glycogenesis. Now, how will the process of glycogenesis be stimulated? You know that normally this is the liver. I get what I'm saying. That the liver cells. So when there is high concentration of glucose in the blood, the insulin will cause this glucose that is present in the blood to diffuse into the what? Liver cell. If it, if it is the muscle cell, it will also diffuse into the muscle cell. You know, if you don't forget, around the what? Liver cells, they are present for facilitated carrier, which we call what? The glucose transporter 2. So the glucose transporter 2 will cause the uh, the transport of glucose into the liver cell so that the glucose can now undergo the process of what? Glycogenesis. 
thereby the glucose is undergo a synthetic reaction and converted to glycogen. But if it is for blood cell, which glucose transporter behind the glucose inside the cytosol? That is what glucose transporter for. You get so that is about glycogenesis. So that's where that glycogenesis occurs here in the liver or in the body. You get when do we undergo glycogenesis? When is high blood glucose level, and that's what got hyperglycemia. So that is it. And what are the two major transporters that can assist the carrier of glucose into the cytosol? Is the glucose transporter two? When it comes to what? Liver. And the glucose transporter one or four. When it comes to what? Muscles. Do you get that? So when the glucose diffuse into the what? Cytosol of this organ, whether the liver or the muscle, they can now undergo the process of glycogenesis. Do you understand my point? So there's something I want you to understand about the synthesis of glycogen from glucose. Do you get it? You know, Glucose is a monosaccharide unit. You know, when we talk about classification of carbohydrates, it is divided into the number one is what? Monosaccharide. Then number two is what? Oligosaccharide. And the third one is what? Polysaccharide. Now, when we are talking about monosaccharide, one favorable example of monosaccharide is what? Glucose. Why another example of the oligosaccharide is what? Maltose. You know, oligosaccharide is also divided into disaccharide, trisaccharide, and all. When you have two monosaccharide units combined together, then polysaccharide is what? Glycogen. So that is the that in the synthesis of glycogen, the glucose would have passed through a stage of becoming oligosaccharide before it can become polysaccharide, which is glycogen. You know, you don't forget glucose plus glucose we give us what? Maltose. Are you what I'm saying now? Maltose is a typical form of disaccharide. And disaccharide is under what? Oligosaccharide. You know, oligosaccharide is telling us that they are made up of 2 to 10 monosaccharide units. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So when this glucose combine together, are you getting what I'm saying now? It did rise to a what? A oligosaccharide, which is maltose. But when more and more glucose combined together, it will now give us what we call polysaccharide. Most especially when we have 10 to thousands of monosaccharide units combined together, it will give us what polysaccharide, which is glycogen. And that's what I'm saying now. So, what I want you to know is that when we have a series of glucose combining together, it will give us what? It will give us what? Glycogen. That is what we help us in this process, which is known as glycogenesis. You need to understand how glucose combines together to give us what? Glycogen. So about 10 to thousands of glucose can come together and exist as a polysaccharide unit to give us what? Glycogen. Now, if those glucose are combined together, then we have glucose, glucose, then glucose, glucose, concentration. So when these glucose are combined together, there is a linkage that is connecting these two glucose together. That's what we call glycosidic linkage. Do you understand now? So you need to understand the principle behind glycosidic linkage or glycosidic bond. Because it's more than connect this monomer, which is the glucose together, and to come the polymer, which is what? Glycogen. Now, let me explain the theory behind the combination of glucose. Do you guys know the glucose is made up of six carbon molecules? So the glucose is CHO, CHOH, COH, CHOH, CHOH, and CH2OH. This is glucose. I get what I'm saying now. So if not, this is a fissure projection of glucose. But I call it fissure projection. So this glucose can also exist in a cyclic form, we call it pinhano structure, because the glucose is made up of a cis carbon. So this is the glucose. Yeah, so you have the glucose here. Yes. So this is what? H O H. H O H O H H. Then H O H. Then we have this as C H two O H. And we have this as what? Um, H. So this is our what? Glucose. 
So let us know by carbon. This is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5, and carbon 6. Do you get it now? It is derived from the artificial projection of these groups. So this is the group of Albert's projection. What do you call it? Albert's projection. Do you get it now? Now, if you look at this group, we want to look at how glucose combines with other groups. Because this is going to help us when I'm explaining the pathway of glycogenesis. So when you have another glucose, now let's do another glucose. This is it here. Yeah? Alright. Do you get it? So this is HOH, HOH, OH, H. We have this as OH, OH, and this as what? CH, OH, and this as what? H. So this is another one, glucose. Do you get it? So glucose plus glucose. I want to tell you the principle behind the glycosidic linkage. Now, this glucose wants to combine with this glucose. I guess what I'm saying now. So if this glucose wants to combine with this glucose, how will they combine? This one, this is the reducing end, and this is the non-reducing end. You know this is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4. So this one goes to be carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 1, carbon 4. So this carbon 1 of this glucose is the reducing end. Why is carbon 4 of this glucose is the what? Non-reducing end. What I call it? Non-reducing end. So how do you form this linkage? Is that this one we donate is OH. And this one we donate is what? H. So when you donate OH and H, what will be released? Water, H2O, will be released during the process of combining glucose. So what we make is the linkage bonded by what? This is what we call what? Alpha 1 for glycosidic bond. What I call it? Alpha 1 for glycosidic bond. Yeah, it is an alpha one for because it exists between the carbon one of this glucose and the carbon four of this glucose. Because in the process of glycogenesis, I will be explaining how this glucose combines together with alpha one for alpha one for glycosidic bond to give us glycogen. Because we want to synthesize glycogen from glucose. So glucose needs to combine together. So when this glucose and glucose, 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 glucose combine together, when we have about thousands of glucose combined together, what will it give us? It gives us glycogen. So what is existing between each glucose combined together is the alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage or alpha 1 for glycosidic bond. How do you find it now? Now you should understand that during the synthesis of glycogen, Glycogen exists as a linear form and a branch form. So there is another glucose that can come here and bind this. Now, look at this. So another glucose can also come like this. Yes. So this is what H O H. This is what H O H. This is what O H and H. And this this carbon one, all right, so it should be something like this. So this is carbon one, carbon two. So this is carbon one, carbon two. This is the carbon three H O H. This is the carbon four. Okay, so this one will be O H H. This will be H O H, and this is the CH to OH and then H. So this is another glucose. You get it? So another glucose can also come in a branch form, whereby this carbon 1 we combine with carbon 6 of another glucose. And what do they form the group? They form this OH, we combine with what? HA. And they are connected together by what? Alpha. This is an oxygen and alpha. And they are connected by what? Glycosidine. Which is what? Alpha 1 6 glycosidic linkage or what? Bond. So, what I just want you to know is that in the synthesis of glycogen from glucose, the glucose is connected, a series of glucose is connected by what? Alpha 1 for glycosidic bond. But the glycogen should exist as a branch polymer as well. So, how can they occur as a branch polymer? The glucose also connects by using what? Alpha 1 6 glycosidic bond. You get now, so I'll be using this linkage during the process of glycogenesis. So you should understand the difference between alpha 1 for glycosidic bond and what? Alpha 1 since glycosidic bond linkage. You know, there are some times that this OH might be down and this OH will be up. 
that God, God be that one form that is evil. But we are not concerned about that. We should lay emphasis on the word Alpha. Because the OH age and the OH age that want to form the Lord are aligned. Do you get so that is Alpha one form that is evil. Do you get now? So in my explanation on metabolic pathway, which is the glycogenesis, this is what I'll be using. So this is our glucose. Because I cannot be drawing this glucose, be drawing this glucose when I'm explaining the pathway. You get it? So this is the glucose. You get this is carbon. Let me denote this as. So this is the carbon one, this is the carbon four, and this is the carbon six. This is the glucose. You get it? Yeah. Now, so this is my word, glucose. I get my point now. So if I'm not glucose by this, so that means, all right. So this is another glucose, this is carbon one. Let me use this. So this is carbon one, carbon four, and carbon what? Six, with a smiling face. You get, so this is another one, glucose. So if this glucose comes to buy together, what do they use? They use that carbon one and carbon four. And what we get is that alpha one, four, glycosidic bond. I get what I'm saying. So this is what I'll be using when I'm explaining glycogenesis because I cannot be drawing this structure to make it very easier. Do you get doing the process? So if I want that glucose by with this carbon C, let's say I want that glucose like this, and this is carbon one, carbon four, and carbon six. Then which one therefore? Alpha one six glycosidic bond. I get it now. So this is what I'll be using. In the process of glycogenesis. Now, once you look at the enzymatic pathway of glycogenesis, once you look at how series of enzymes act on the glucose, you know, we already have the glucose. This is the glucose, the carbon one, the carbon four, and the carbon six. Do you get this? Is my glucose. Yeah, my glucose. So the glucose is already diffused into the what? The liver. So this is the what? The cytosol of the liver. Because if you don't forget, glycogenesis occurs majorly in the liver cell, the hepatocyte. Now you already have the glucose in the cytosol of the liver for the process of what? Glycogenesis. Do you get it now? So this is the glucose. So the glucose needs to be converted to what? Glycogen. We have a series of enzymes act on this glucose. Then convert it to glycogen so that the glucose can be stored in the form of glycogen in the liver or maybe in the skeletal muscles. Do you get it now? So let us move on. Now I will be using this place to explain the enzymatic pathway of glycogenesis. So what we have here? We have an glucose. Do you get it now? So this is my glucose. Yes. So the glucose is acted upon by a particular enzyme. If you don't forget, don't forget that the glucose in the blood that is used to the cytosol of the liver by a facilitated carrier, which is called what? Glucose transporter 2, if you remember. So when the glucose is present in the what? Cytosol of the liver, the first enzyme to act on the glucose is what we call what? Glucokinase. So the glucokinase, we act on this glucose. You get it though, I do not draw the structure of this glucose. I do not draw this because I'm going to use it later on in the process of glycogenesis. I, I don't want to use it for now, but as time goes on, I'm going to use this structure. But for now, let me use the name, which is called what? Glucose. So now this glucose is acted upon by a particular enzyme. And what's the name of the enzyme? Glucokinase. You get it now? So this glucokinase. We convert this glucose present in the cytosol of the liver to become what? Glucose 6-phosphate. What I call it? Glucose 6-phosphate. Now, how do this enzyme perform this reaction? That is very now that glucokinase use of ATP and ATP become what? ATP. So that is very that glucokinase use ATP. It's removed the phosphate group for the ATP and add it to the carbon 6 of this glucose so that this glucose has glucose 6 phosphate. Glucose 6 what? Phosphate. Now, how do we have glucose 6 what? This is my glucose. Carbon 1, carbon 4, and carbon 6. So, where do we have the phosphate? We have the phosphate here. So, this is the phosphate. This is what we call glucose 6 phosphate. 
I guess what I'm saying is my feelings. Glucosis, this glucosis phosphate will be added upon by the next enzyme that is waiting for the process of glycogenesis. And what is that enzyme? The enzyme is what we call phosphoglucomutase. Phosphoglucomutase. You know, when we talk about mutants, the action of mutants is that they undergo the location. I get what I'm saying. So this phosphoglucomutase is a reversible reaction. That's the way that it can go in either way, not like the step one. So this is the step one. Not like the step one that glucokinase is what? Irreversible. But the step two is what? Reversible. This is step two. I get what I'm saying. So the phosphoglucomutase will catalyze the elongation of this phosphate that is present at carbon 6 and put it at carbon 1. You know this is carbon 1. So this is the phosphate. So it's going to remove this phosphate here and put it at carbon 1. So this is the phosphate now at carbon 1. So that is the that phosphoglucomutase convert glucose phosphate to become what? Glucose 1 phosphate. I get to my point now. Can you see the way enzyme is acting on the glucose so that the glucose can later be converted to what glycogen? Yeah, so let's continue. Now, this is step two. Yeah, step two, which is what? The vaccine. Now, we already have the phosphate to be present at the carbon one of glucose. Now, in the next step of glycogenesis. Alright. Now, then, in this process, glucose 1 phosphate will be converted to another typical structure. I get what I'm saying. You know, in the process, there's something we call uridine triphosphate. I get what I'm saying. So, this uridine triphosphate is the one that will continue the process of what? Glycogenesis. Okay, so, this particular molecule is needed for what glycogenesis to continue. Now, the thing to is made up of what? It's made up of uracil plus lyos plus what? How many phosphates? Three phosphates. That's what they call the what? Uridine triphosphate. What is the, what they call the uridine triphosphate? Uracil, lyos, and what? Three phosphates. So, uracil plus lyos is what? Uridine. And how many phosphates there? Triphosphate. Do you get it? So this uridine triphosphate will be added to the glucose 1 phosphate. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So let us see this is the uridine triphosphate. So this is what? Uridine triphosphate that is added to what? Glucose 1 phosphate. So when uridine triphosphate is added to glucose 1 phosphate, about 3 to 5 glucose 1 phosphate will be added to what? To the what? Uridine triphosphate. I get what I'm saying. So when you have three of this glucose one phosphate that is added to what beautifully, what will happen? This with this one phosphate, we got connected to what glucose one phosphate. So let us see. So during the process, this with this one phosphate will be added to what glucose one phosphate. So that is that is going to form you with this diphosphate one glucose. How did that happen? You will need diphosphate glucose. That tells us that UTP is added to what glucose 1 phosphate. But when the UTP is added, only the UBT plus 1 phosphate is added. This and 1 phosphate, yeah, this and 1 phosphate, you will need 1 phosphate, is added to glucose 1 phosphate. So as you will need and one phosphate is added to glucose one phosphate. It divides to what? You will need diphosphate glucose. Now let's look at it. You will need plus phosphate plus glucose one phosphate plus glucose one phosphate. You are going to understand. So what do we have here? You will need how many phosphates is there? Two phosphates. That is, you will need one phosphate, one phosphate. Diphosphate. Then what do we have here? Glucose. That is how we want to do this. So that is the time that the two phosphate that is here will become what? Released. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So when you do TP, you will need that triphosphate. What to add with glucose 1 phosphate? It is only the UVD and 1 phosphate that will add with glucose 1 phosphate to form what? UDP glucose. 
shall be seen here. So it's going to be made two phosphates that is not added to what? Glucose 1 phosphate. So which enzyme is performing this reaction? Which enzyme is performing this catalytic reaction converting glucose 1 phosphate to UGP glucose? The name of the enzyme is what? UGP diphosphate glucose pyrophosphorylase. Yeah, this is the name of the enzyme. So all this reaction that I'm testing, the enzyme that performs the catalytic reaction is this. We call this UGP glucose pyrophosphorylase. Do you understand? What that provides is what that has this UGP. You need to add phosphate to glucose 1 phosphate. And only one phosphate from the UGP will be added to glucose 1 phosphate to form what? UGP diphosphate glucose, which is this. Are you getting now? So we have it like this. Let me draw my glucose. This is my glucose. This is carbon 1, carbon 4, carbon 6. Then what do you have here? You have the word UDP. So this is UDP glucose. So this is what we have here. Are you getting my point now? So that is the what? Step 3 of glycogenesis. Now if you don't forget that 2 phosphate is not added to glucose 1 phosphate. So what will happen to this 2 phosphate? So this first 2 phosphate will be acted upon by a particular enzyme. That enzyme is called pyrophosphatase. So it's going to, the pyrophosphatase is going to break these 2 phosphates. And when it breaks these 2 phosphates, do you know what happens? These 2 phosphates is released. And you know, when these 2 phosphates is released, that's what we call what? Exactly the reaction. So it's going to release energy. So this two phosphate is going to be this energy for this process of glycogenesis to continue. Because glycogenesis is an endabolic reaction, whereby energy is conserved. But it needs a particular energy for it to continue. So that energy is derived like from this one, two phosphates. And that's what we call what? Pyrophosphate. So what brings down the interpyrophosphate is the what? Pyrophosphate is. And this pyrophosphate releases what energy for this glycogenesis to continue. So this is an example reaction, causing the endabolic reaction to want to continue. That is it. Now, next step is that this UDP glucose, if you don't forget, the UDP glucose will be acted upon by a particular enzyme. Though it's not an enzyme, there's something called glycogenin. You get so this is the structure of glycogenin. Yeah, this one called glycogenin. Now, when we talk about glycogenin, glycogenin is a homodimer. You get it? It is in form of tyrosine. You know, tyrosine has an hydroxy group. You get it now? So, this glycogenin will not enhance the process of glycogenesis. So, glycogenin is added to what? PDP glucose. I get what I'm saying now. So, about one thing you need to know about glycogenin is that glycogenin loves glucose, but it does not love the within diphosphate. And what to add UDP glucose to glycogen? How is that possible? Now, what to add this to the within diphosphate glucose to glycogen? So this glycogen is only receptive to glucose, but it does not like UDP. So when you add about 3 UDP glucose to glycogen, what happens? It means that during the process, 3 UDP will be released. So when you add Glycogenin, glycogenin will only absorb the glucose, but UDP will become what is released. Are you getting my point? Sir? So, in the process of this step, three UDP glucose, this is the uh, UDP glucose is TV. Do you So, the TV of this UDP glucose will be added to glycogenin, and glycogenin will buy the glucose, and this will become released. TV UDP. So, that's why you have like, what is it? Glycogenin. This is my glycogenin. OH. And how many glucose is added? TB glucose. This carbon 1, carbon 4, and carbon 1, 6. This carbon 1, carbon 4, and carbon 6. This what? Carbon 1, carbon 4, and carbon 1, 6. Yeah, it's my face. It's my face. It's my face. Wow. It's my face. Yeah, that's what it is. Now, if you notice this faculty, it's added to how many glucose? To so, TB of this. So, glycogen is reserved 
certain to do this, but does not like it. So, when you are thinking of this glycogen, TV will be released. But TV glucose will be added to glycogen, and this is it. So, how many glucose will be out there? TV glucose. And what is connecting the glucose together? What is this? Alpha 1 for glycosidic bond. Alpha 1 for 1 for? Alpha 1 for glycosidic bond. Alpha 1 for glycosidic bond. Can you see? That's why I explained it earlier. So that you can understand how glucose combine together and form this what? Alpha 1 for glycosidic leakage or bond. Now, can you see where glucose are combined? That is how they keep learning until they become our what? Glycogen. This process is catalyzed by what we call glycogenic initiator synthesis. Synthesis, rather. Though it is believed that this process occurs naturally on its own. You get? We call it onto glycosidation. That's telling that it occurs automatically without the use of enzyme. You get? So the glycogenic initiator synthesis is just telling that. An enzyme needs to be initiated in order to continue this one process. That will lead me to my next step. So this is step one, step four of glycogenesis. And that comes for what? Auto glycosylation process. Auto glycosylation. Now, we have glycogenin, which is a tanzanium, is a homodimer, and it has been attached to three glucose. I get what I'm saying now. So this structure is what we call what? This structure form is what we call what? Glycogenin primer. What I call it? Glycogenin primer. That's the state that the primitive form of glycogen. Can you see? Glycogen is forming little by little. Do you get it now? That's why we call it glycogen primer. Now, the next step. Wow, that's so nice. Let me use this. This glycogen primer will be acted upon by particular enzyme. How do you know what I'm saying? Now? The enzyme is what we call glycogen synthesis. Do you get Now, the glycogen synthesis will be like, wow, we are forming alpha 1 for glycosidic bond. The glucose are connected together to form what we call glycogen. Then the glycogen synthesis will be like, wow, how can I make? Of this glucose, we need to lengthen this chain so that the glucose can later be converted to glycogen. That is what the glycogen synthesis is saying. How? Ah, I think this process needs to be what? Elongated. This glucose needs to what? To combine more and more so that glycogen needs to be what? Formed. Then what the glycogen synthesis does is going to add more UDP glucose to this. It's going to add more, more of what? UDP glucose. So glycogen add like about 30 UDP glucose to the glycogen primer. So when it adds 30 UDP glucose, UDP glucose to this molecule, which is the glycogen primer. I get what I'm saying now. If you don't forget, this glycogen does not like UDP, but it's like glucose. So what will happen? 30 UDP will be released. But how many glucose will be added to this glycogen primer? Glycogen. But how many glucose will be added to this glycogen primer? 13 glucose. So what we have, we have it like this. This is my glycogen. Then how many glucose is there? 14 glucose, 1, 2, 3. Don't forget that they are collected by what? Alpha 1, 4 glycosidic bond. This is carbon 6, carbon 6, carbon 6. Now a lot of more and more addition of 13 UDP glucose to this glycogen primer. What happened? 13 glucose will be added to it. So we have to like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Can you see what has happened? So this is what we call what? Long chain glycogen. Can you see the way this enzyme is acting upon all these structures in order to give glycogen? So the glycogen synthesis lengthens in this chain by adding more 13 UDP glucose to the glycogen primer. So as it adds 13 UDP glucose to the glycogen primer, what happens? The glucose attached to this three glucose to give us 16 glucose. And how many UDP glucose is How many UDP is this? 13 UDP. Because glycogen does not like UDP. So the UDP is a byproduct and glucose is added to it to become this. Now the last enzyme 
So I'm going to do it like this. Yeah, so this is the motivation. Yeah, so what do we have here? We have this long chain glycogen. So this long chain glycogen, don't forget, glycogen is a multi branch polymer of glucose. So glycogen has to be linear and branch. So we already have a long chain glycogen, a linear glycogen. So this is the branch. So how will it become branch? That's when a particular enzyme will come into play. I want to about the enzyme. The enzyme is called branching enzyme. What I call it? Branching enzyme. Though this enzyme has a particular name. The name is called amino 1416 transglycosylase. Yeah, so this is the name of the enzyme, branching enzyme. So what this enzyme does is that the enzyme will break the upper one for glycosylic bond of this long chain damage. So this is step one. Step, this is step one. We have step four. This is step five. And this is the last step, step one, step six. So this enzyme, which is branching enzyme, it will break the body of this one, linear glycogen. So it's going to break this bond here. And can you have any glucose? Okay, we can say it breaks about 3 to 5 glucose, you get it? is not specific. So let's add 5 glucose, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this enzyme will break the bond here. And can you have any glucose? 5 glucose. So when it carries this 5 glucose, it's going to add it to the carbon cis of this glucose. Now, how do we have it? Don't forget, this is my one glycogen. And how many glucose uh, added to this? 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. What is connecting all these glucose together? Alpha 1, 4, glycosidic one. So all this has carbosis, 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 and so on and so forth. You get it now? Now, this enzyme is going to break how many? It's going to carry how many glucose? Five glucose. It will break this one here and carry about five glucose. One, two, three, four, five. So when you carry this five glucose, it's going to add it to the side of this one, glycogen. So now let's look at this. how many glucose? One, two, three, four, five. Now you break this five glucose. The glucose is going to get I get it now. So when you're going to add the five glucose, it's going to add it here. One, two, three, four, five. Can you now see that you already have a linear glycogen and a branch glycogen? This is what we call what? Glycogen. I get what I'm saying because glycogen is a branched polymer of glucose. So what is combined together is glucose. That's why glycogen is a homopolysaccharide. Tell you that large amount of glucose, the same polysaccharide which is glucose, is combined together to give one glycogen. Now, can you see the bond here? So, all these bonds are what? Alpha 1 for glycosidic bond. The one part of this bond, this one, alpha 1 cis glycosidic bond. Can you see now? So, this is what we call the glycogen. Now, this enzyme, what is it called? Glycogen synthase. Yeah, glycogen synthase can also come and also lengthen the chain. Glycogen synthase may lengthen the chain again. And also letting this branch chain. Then what happens again? As the glycogen is letting this chain, what happens again? Branch enter the pump, break five glucose and add it to the branch chain again. That is how they perform that was opposing reaction. So let's say that glycogen is letting the chain. Why the branch enter what? Branch chain. So this glycogen is letting the chain. And the branch enzyme will to branch the chain so that the glycogen will be formed. Now we are done. This is the glycogen. The glycogen has been formed. Do you get it now? So that is about the branching enzyme. So the essence of the branching enzyme is to branch the chain because glycogen exists as a linear form and a branch chain form. So this is my what? Glycogen. So can you see how we synthesize glycogen from glucose? So the glycogen is now stored in the liver or in the muscle. It is stored, the glucose is stored in form of glycogen in the liver and the muscles. You get it? So that is about the pathway of glycogenesis. Now we have come to the end of this video. Please don't forget that at the end of this video, there is always a practice question 
that can enhance your understanding on what Genesis part two is all about. Please don't forget, and don't forget to like and subscribe. It's anti-Yoruba.